Chapter eight is all about cell division. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about chromosomes, but mainly what we're gonna be talking about as far as chromosomes go is how we're gonna be following them throughout the process of cell division. So there are three types of cell division we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how prokaryotic cells divide, and then we're gonna talk about the two ways that eukaryotic cells divide. Before we get into that, I do just wanna kind of introduce this section with basically how we get immortal cells, um, at least one way we get immortal cells. And I'll talk a little bit more about this when we get into um, mitosis. But immortal cells, um, these are cells that can just divide without end. Um, most cells have a cutoff on how many times they can divide before they are destroyed. Um, and you will know most immortal cells by their name because most immortal cells do cause sickness and um, possibly death in most organisms. And those are generally considered cancer cells. Not all immortal cells turn into cancer cells, but a lot of them do. And we'll talk a little bit later about what else they need to be able to be considered cancer. So what can turn a cell immortal? Well, in eukaryotes, we have linear chromosomes. So the chromosomes are in those lines, unlike circular chromosomes in, you, or I'm sorry, in prokaryotes. And this is a big difference because since our chromosomes are linear, that means they have ends. And you might be thinking, so what? They have ends. But every time a cell divides, we have to copy the DNA. And when the DNA gets copied, little bits of the DNA get cut off. This just is because of the way that DNA is replicated in eukaryotic cells. Um, the machinery can't copy all the way to the very end. And so these little sections on the end get cut off. So we have these structures called telomeres. They're protective caps. And so you can see they've colored them orange here in this uh, electron micrograph of a chromosome set. And these are the sections that are gonna get cut every time the cell divides. Every time you have a division, a little bit of that telomere gets cut off and that's okay because those telomeres are non-coding DNA. They don't have any directions or information in them. But eventually those telomeres run out. And you can see here that when you get to the point where you run out of telomere and you start cutting into the DNA, then the cell is going to die. It actually gets a signal to say, oh, we're cutting into the good DNA, we're done. So the cell will no longer be allowed to divide, and at that point, at the end of its lifespan, it will die. So that's how a normal cell will work, is that it will have this telomere, so it basically has a set number of times it can divide, and then that telomere is going to get shorter and shorter every time it divides until it hits the regular DNA. And you can see here that the number of cell divisions is between 80 and 90. So, you know, a normal cell can divide 80 to 90 times and then it's done. Now, the thing is, is that there are cells that need to be able to rebuild their telomeres. So for example, single cell organisms, if they couldn't fix these telomeres, they'd be in trouble because eventually they'd divide to the point where their DNA would be getting chopped up they'd have to destroy themselves, and then that whole species of single-celled organisms would die out. So those single-celled organisms need to be able to rebuild telomeres, and our cells producing sperm and eggs need to be able to rebuild these telomeres, especially the ones producing sperm, because sperm are produced constantly throughout male uh, organisms' lifespans. So these cells need to be able to rebuild those telomeres. <clears throat> and for most other cell types, that's a problem. Um, because like I mentioned, this leads to uncontrolled cell division. It leads to these immortal cells that we know as cancer. So how are they rebuilding their telomeres? 
um, the cells that need to be able to do it and then these ones that can get the ability. It's an enzyme. So there's an enzyme called telomerase and we have that enzyme when the cells are made, uh, but the enzyme, the gene for that enzyme gets turned off. So that way we can't rebuild them just whenever. Single cell organisms and the cells that produce sperm and eggs have the ability to turn the enzyme back on um, when they need it and then they'll turn it back off. The problem is when you get some cells that have the ability to turn it on or it gets turned on and left on, they can lead to those cancer type cells. There's another condition as well. Um, so these, uh, especially this child right here, it, there's an indication that the, the kid over here, their uh, sibling probably has the condition too, but definitely this individual has what's called uh, progeria. So you can see there Hutchinson Guilford progeria syndrome. Um, these kids are born with shorter than normal telomeres, so they don't have those 80 to 90 cell divisions on their cells. They have much fewer divisions, and so they actually appear to age at a rapid rate, um, and it does shorten their lifespan. So children with this dis disorder rarely live beyond the age of 13. Um, it tells us, and once we figured this out, we figured out that telomeres are tied to the aging process. Um, so one of the things that scientists are looking at is how can we turn telomeres on possibly to expand lifespans without causing cancer. Um, so, all right, so just real quick, um, which of these might be what we see or characterize the telom tel tel sorry, telomeres on the chromosomes of a cancer cell? So which of these might characterize the telomeres on the chromosomes of a cancer cell? All right, and in this case, it is A. Um, the tel telomeres are going to generally be the same length after every division um, because they're going to rebuild them just back to the way they were. Um, they might be a little longer, but generally they're going to be the same length after each division because that telomerase is just going to come in and fix it. Um, B is what happens in a regular normal cell because um, those uh, are going to get shorter with every division. All right, so just a reminder, I mentioned this when I started talking about telomeres, um, and we're going to see this as we go through the types of cell division. Eukaryotic cells, they have those linear chromosomes. So when we look at the chromosomes in the nucleus for eukaryotic cells, it basically looks like a bunch of spaghetti noodles that are cooked and just jammed into the nucleus. This is different from the chromosomes in prokaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells, they are circular. So remember when we looked at uh, prokaryotic cell diagrams and stuff before, they're always packaged in circles. Here you can actually see they've actually kind of uh, twisted them up to pack them in a little bit more, but it still is one big circle. And we'll see too, sometimes there'll be other little circles in here of DNA, but it's always gonna be circular DNA for prokaryotes. All right, so I mentioned that we're going to talk about different types of cell division. So we're going to talk first about cell division for prokaryotes. So prokaryotes divide by binary fission. So let's start off with what does the word binary mean? So binary means two. So by, right, by for bicycle or you know any of those other words so bi is two and fission you may be a little familiar with that idea um, it is the opposite of fusion so fusion means to put things together fission means to separate so binary fission is where we're going to divide into two all right so that's what it mean, the name means. We're going to divide into two. And the process is pretty simple. 
you're going to start with a single prokaryotic parent cell, so one parent cell, and it's got its circular DNA chromosome. That chromosome is going to go through step one. Step one is DNA replication. You're going to see different names for that. So replication, synthesis, duplication, um, you know, all of those mean the same thing. We're going to copy the DNA, right? Because the goal is at the end of step one that we're going to take that circular chromosome, we're going to make a copy and end up with two circular chromosomes, all right? So now we have a parent cell at the end of step one, at the end of DNA replication, and it's got two copies of those chromosomes. Step two, we're going to stretch the cell out and divide it okay, with one copy in each side. At the end of step two, we're gonna have two daughter cells. And you can see here, we're going to get two genetically identical daughter cells because that DNA was copied and they each have identical chromosomes to each other. So not only are they genetically identical to each other, but they're also genetically identical to the parent cell that we started with. Um, the other thing, um, and it's hard to see in this picture because of the way they drew it, um, the other thing to keep in mind, these daughter cells are half the size of the parent cell. So this cell is literally stretched and split in half. So these two are identical to each other in size and in their DNA. Um, they are identical in DNA to the parent cell, but they're half the size of the parent cell. So they're going to have to spend some time getting bigger, growing up before they can divide again. And that's the end of binary fission. So the rest of this chapter is going to focus on eukaryotic cell division. Um, so just like when I, we talked about cells, um, there's not a lot going on with binary or with prokaryotes, but a lot to talk about with eukaryotic cell division. So the rest of the lectures for this chapter are going to focus on eukaryotic cell division, mitosis, and meiosis.